All right, we're running long here as usual. So let's power through these last three hands. And these are hands I played, again, just before Black Friday in a 3060 shorthanded and 3060 shorthanded online games. So I defend my big blind against the cutoff raise. The flop comes queen three deuce with two diamonds. I check raise and get three bet. I call. Turn five of clubs, check call. River eight of clubs goes check, check. So what's my range? And think about it for a quick second. You can pause it if you want to. Okay, so when I check raise the flop but fail to cap it, you know that I don't have a monster hand. You can put me pretty squarely on either a weakish draw that I didn't want to keep raising with, so maybe a flush draw that has showdown value, like an ace high flush draw, or some kind of pair between three and two jacks, let's say. I might have even capped with two jacks, but probably not. I probably would have called. So we have those pairs and those draws, and that's pretty much my range. When I check call the turn, you can rule out 6-4, which is one of those straight draws that I might have played this way in the flop. I certainly would have check raised the turn with that hand, and I also would have check raised the turn with the set of fives, and I might have check raised the turn with, of course, ace four if I had made that straight, and maybe with some other ace high flush draws, which I would now try to get a pair to maybe fold to this strong action because I have to have some semi bluffs in my range. Now I have quite a few more outs with the ace high diamond draw. So it's possible to rule out some of those hands, but I would probably keep a few of the ace high diamond draws in my range too. So it that that's gonna go either way. Um, there are just some diamond draws that I might just I, I might choose to play a little slower. It's it's hard to really enumerate all the different diamond draws and I have different reasons for picking certain diamond draws to go in the check raise check raise call versus check raise cap versus just check call the flop uh, depending on the situation so let's just say for now that there will be some diamonds still in my range here and it's hard to say which ones i would have i would have check raised semi bluff some of them on the turn and some of them i would have kept in and the river i would not lead that eight of clubs it doesn't does not look good for my range ever so that doesn't change anything on my range so adding all that up like i said i have some pair between three and jacks I could have 6-5 where I paired the 5 on the turn. And I could have either, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything. I could also have that 5-4 where I paired the 5 on the turn. As I mentioned, I have some diamonds. Some of those 5-4s I would have put into my cap range in the flop with the open-ended straight draw, but probably some of them I would have kept just so that I could, could represent when I hit it and also have when I hit that hand sometimes. Again, a little bit of a mixed strategy with the draws pretty much the way I like to go. In the actual hand, I had two sevens, which is pretty squarely in the middle of my range here. And the cutoff had the ace of spades and the seven of diamonds, which falls under the unusual line category. In my opinion, he is really not getting very much value out of this hand by playing it this way. I mean, I can tell you what he's thinking. He's thinking he wants to get to the showdown as cheap as he could. And he accomplished that at least except that he kind of didn't. He happened to hit a turn card where if he had just called the check raise in the flop, he would have had to call again on the turn. But this is the kind of hand that he has here where on a lot of turn cards he could just fold. So yeah, he, he, he wouldn't get to the showdown that way, but you don't really want to get to the showdown with a seven after I check raise a queen three deuce diamond flop on a lot of turn cards. There are a lot of turn cards where you don't want to see the showdown. You want to, you want to fold and save yourself a couple of bets. And so I think that's a little bit of, I don't know if fancy play syndrome is the right word, but a lot of, a lot of Holden players who are otherwise pretty strong get a little obsessed with making sure they never fold the winning hand and they cost themselves some chips in doing that because they end up calling down too often with parts of their range that they could have played completely differently. I like the way the cutoff played this hand until the three bet on the flop. The, the race preflop is fine. Obviously, the, C, the continuation bet on the flop is fine, but I probably would have lost a little more with this hand because I would have had to call the turn, so I would have lost half a bet more, but that's just because of the specific hand that I had and the specific run out. I think a better value play in terms of being able to get away from your hand more often and also possibly inducing action when you actually hit something on the turn 
would have been to play it a little slower on the flop. 